Hey, what's up? Now that I got my uh, workbench controller project, I guess is what I was calling it. Once it, now they got that project done, uh, I actually had some time to just work on something else for fun. Uh, I was doing the usual surfing YouTube, and then you know, on the right you have the suggested videos, and you just keep clicking through video after video. And I, I stumbled, I stumbled across some uh, DC load projects. I know it's you know a popular one for a lot of people, uh, especially for learning. You know, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can learn from because there's a little bit of everything going on. Uh, and I noticed one common thing about all of them: uh, they all measure current, and some of them use LCD screens, but the one thing I noticed they don't do, I didn't see a single one that measured battery capacity or not just battery capacity, just, just capacity, uh, measurement in like measurement over time. So what I decided to do was, well, my first thought was, is that possible? Could I do that? Would the, would the math be very hard? I don't, you know, you wouldn't think it'd be hard. It's just <laughs> current over time, so I thought, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. Broke out the uh, Arduino Uno. It's actually uh, not the one I normally use. The one I normally use is mounted to a little plate next to a half-size breadboard, but I thought I killed it earlier, so I swapped it, but eh, that's not worth mentioning. I should, don't know why I mentioned it. Uh, that is a negative LC character LCD, 16 by 2. Uh, I think it's from Adafruit. It's one of the keypad ones, and the nice thing about it is it's uh, I squared C. So you give it power, and then you use two I squared C pins, and then that's all the pins you have to use on your Arduino. It's really awesome, and then you just use your library to communicate with it. Um, this is hooked up across the current shunt resistor, so this is um, actually the current. This would be 1.0364 amps. Uh, it's a one ohm, one percent precision resistor, which I hooked up to my Agilent. 34461A using four wire measurement and it measured 1.0004. So I got really lucky. Usually those one percent resistors aren't that accurate, but I got a pretty, pretty, a pretty dead on one. So anyways, that's should be pretty damn close to the exact amount of current flowing through. Uh, it's actually hiding back here. I don't want it to bump into anything, but it's it's just your standard. I think it's a 25 watt one one amp uh, resistor. Uh, I got two pots. Um, that's just for a coarse and fine adjustment. I have some 10 turns from China. They're junk. I, th I thought I was going to save money and have them still be half decent, but now they're shit. In fact, here's two of them, and I, after two in a row sucked, uh, I gave up on them and then just used some of these regular old single turn pots. And you know what? They work fine. So, uh, And in the long run, if I make this a permanent project in an enclosure, uh, I'm gonna, instead of using uh, pots, I'm going to use uh, a DAC. Um, I got some 12-bit DACs, and I think 12-bit DAC would be perfect for this project. So then you can just use the Arduino and some uh, code to send whatever voltage you want. And you can do a lot of cool stuff when you do it that way. So that'll be neat. Um, it's just LM358 amp, op amp. They're super noisy, super crappy. Um, anything you could use would be better than this one, but that's all I had on hand. Apparently I used all my other uh, precision op amps up for other projects. So anyways, it's working fine as you can see. Um, I have the elapsed time since the sketch started. I have the milliamp hour measurement. That's how much current's flowed through this circuit. And then that's the uh, current right now through the shunt resistor, which, as you can see, is just a tiny bit off. But uh, that's something you can trim in the code. I just am lazy and just want to get this video over with because I work tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Right now, it's at 3 volts, and it's drawing 1 amp, so it's 3 watts. And heat sink's a little toasty, but it's not, it's not too hot to touch, so... Uh, in the final project, I'm thinking maybe do like an extruded aluminum case so the whole chassis can be a heatsink. Um, I don't know. It'd be nice to do a passive, passive cooling so it's dead silent, but I guess putting a fan in it wouldn't be too terrible either. It'd just be another potential source for noise and other problems, but whatever. Um, so anyways, uh, I guess I should reset the sketch. There was a little bug I noticed, but like I said, I want to get this over with. I Usually I'm vain about this stuff and I'll go fix the code before I do a video, but... Uh, sometimes, for some reason, uh, you'll see a s <laughs> if it's a seconds is below 10, so if it's like at the 9 second mark, sometimes it doesn't have a leading zero, which I thought I put that in the code. I don't know what the deal is. Obviously, right now, 
uh, it's fine, but uh, apparently I need to go fix that, but whatever, just warning you ahead of time that, uh, yeah, that little bug it does exist, and I just need to fix it. Okay, so I guess before I reset, well, let me reset it first. Okay, so it's still at one amp. So if you run one amp for one hour, that's one amp hour, which is the same thing as a thousand milliamp hours. So if you divide that by 60 to figure out what it is, what, what it would be for one minute, that would be 16.66 repeating uh, milliamp hours. So when this hits one minute, this should be 16.66 milliamp hours if my math is correct and this is as accurate as it should be. Now obviously it's basing it off of this current value so if I set it to this this would actually be more accurate but that like I said this is just to get the video out of the way tonight this is I just slapped this together um, I mean I really honestly don't think I spent more than about 30 minutes total between the code setting this on the breadboard tuning it getting it to stop oscillating because it's a crappy op amp and they're not good at driving capacitive loads. Uh, so here we go. Right now, 16.6-ish. Obviously, it changed right between two readings. But uh, I have it set to two, um, no, four readings per second. So I just have, um, I take a timestamp, and then I subtract the timestamp from the current time. And then if that exceeds a quarter of a second, which would be 250 milliseconds, then uh, I take a reading. and I do, So obviously I get four a minute. And so basically what the reading is going to be is milliamp seconds, but then I divide that by four because I'm taking four readings. And then I just add that to a total variable that holds the uh, total milliamp hour rating. Um, now when I display the current on the screen, I have to take it times four to get it back to what it, uh, what it is. Because if I'm dividing it by four, uh, to get a you know a quarter of a reading per second, then I, or one of the four readings per second, uh, it's only going to be a quarter of what the value really is. So I had to take it times four. Obviously, I can code that differently, and I should and will do it differently. But that's how I have it right now. Uh, surprisingly, the code is cake. There's almost nothing to it. It's like one little page, and half of it's just variable dec <laughs> variable declarations and instantiating objects, and in, uh, including libraries. So uh, the actual code is actually pretty skimpy. Um, there is one thing you might notice, uh, the readings go nice and smoothly and quickly and then at each, at one second intervals you'll see it pause and then the pausing I believe started when I added the, uh, uh, the function to calculate the time basically. What I, this is actually calculating it on the fly. Every second it takes a total milliseconds elapsed and then does the math to figure out what the hours, minutes, seconds is. And apparently floating point math is not the 16 megahertz Arduino strong point. So actually I need to measure to make sure this one's actually running at 16. Sometimes I think with that external crystal, these run at eight, but I think I do see a little crystal down there. So I'll have to check to make sure this one's running at 16. I need all the cycles I can get. Um, it's a two by 16 LCD, so it's a little tight on space, but obviously I was able to fit three different readings on the screen, which is fine, and I mean, it's working fine for me. Uh, if I do a final project, I'll probably want a, like a 20 by four, so I have more room. Uh, graphical LCD would be kind of cool, because I can actually draw like a graph across the screen. <laughs> That'd be a little overkill, but it'd be kind of fun. Um, uh, let me think here. Uh, it's really super simple. It's just, if you go Google search, this isn't tutorials, I'm probably not going to post schematic or code, but if I turn this into a project, I will. And I'll release the code and the schematic and uh, how I did it and then demonstration of the final product. But this is just a look what I did kind of thing. Because I haven't seen any videos of anyone who actually measured the, uh, well, I didn't look very hard, but at first glance, I didn't really see any project out there that has a constant current DC load that actually measures uh, battery capacity. So what, I, what, what got me thinking about this too and why I was even searching a video on YouTube about like testing batteries is a uh, buddy at work. We were discussing... Uh, you know, those USB power brick things you can use to charge your phone or tablet. We got one. At, we got some cheap ones at work with our company logo on them for Christmas or some event at work. And we were wondering, you know, how, obviously they're probably cheap Chinese ones and, you know, they're a company that'll engrave them or whatever. We were wondering how 
accurate the readings on those are and it's like it'd be kind of neat to charge one of those up plug it into this guy and then just let it run down until it, uh, until it runs out and then see what uh, see what the actual capacity is versus what was advertised and I guess I haven't showed you yet so this is at 1 amp watch I'll turn it down the current the ins the, the uh, instantaneous current reading is only updates once a second so you'll actually see the milliamp hour reading move way before you see the uh, the current draw go down. So if I go down to zero, you'll see that that's no longer ticking because obviously there's no current flowing through it. So that's just kind of proof that the math behind the scenes is actually doing something. So there you go, we're drawing 103 milliamps and you can see it's moving a lot more slowly. It's In fact, it's going really, really slowly. And then we'll crank it up well over an amp. You can hear my power supply kicking its fan up. Now it's moving very quickly. So anyways, uh, super simple. If you need help with the code, send me a message or post a comment and I'll uh, share it with you, the code on how to actually do the calculation. It's really, really simple. Um, I probably will actually end up turning this into a finished product. It, I, th I think it'd be pretty handy. I have a 300 watt programmable DC load and I use it for some stuff here and there but you know I gotta power it on and get out my big beefy cables for it and then I don't know it'd be kind of nice to have a little desk or a bench top one I don't actually think my DC load the programmable one actually measures capacity I don't think it does actually I've never I'll have to check I'll break out the manual maybe if it's even readable English I don't know it's it's a a May Nuo. <laughs> it's like a ripoff of BK Precision. It looks identical. Yeah, I don't know. So anyways, I thought I'd show you that. And also, I guess another thing I could show you too is the uh, power supply. I'll change the voltage and then you'll see that the current will stay the same. That way, you know, I'm basically proving that, hey, look, it is constant current. Okay, so the value on the left is the load, the value on the right is just powering the Arduino and the uh, op amp. And no, I'm not powering the Arduino's 5 volt rail directly, it's going to the VN, so it's going through its own voltage regulator. So anyways, I'm gonna change this value. Right now it's at three volts, watch, I'll change it to four, and then you'll see the current will stay at 727 milliamps. Change it to five, six, two, there you go. Current did not budge, not one tiny bit, not even a single milliamp. So, so that right there just shows you uh, that the, my proof of concept uh, works great. Now, as far as how accurate the milliamp hour rating is, I've I've done some reading to see the correct way of going about this, and I've read a lot of articles saying that doing a discharge from full to empty isn't always the most accurate method, but the articles I read were talking about lead acid batteries. I think with lithium ion batteries, it probably would be. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, obviously, temperature affects it, so it'd be kind of cool to maybe over here put a temperature reading of ambient. That's why a bigger screen would be better. I could do ambient, and, and I could also do the battery temperature. And if the battery temperature breaches some threshold, uh, cancel the test and then shut it off. That way we don't burn the house down while you're running a long load test. But... I think I'll blabber on enough for such a simple little project. Well, not really a project, kind of a proof of concept, like one of those where I see some projects, they're all missing a feature, and I wonder why, and then I wonder, can I do that? And then I have to find out, and I break out the breadboard and give it a go, and then uh, here we go, it works. So <laughs> if you have any questions, uh, post a comment, let me know, send me a message, yada, yada. Um, if, I, if and when I work on this more and maybe order some parts, parts like I do need to order some more precision op amps since I'm out uh, I might throw this into something a little more permanent and then when I do that I will release whatever code I end up with and you can do whatever you want with it I will post a schematic so if you want to try it yourself but really just go go use YouTube or, or Google search constant current DC load and then you'll see just a billion projects out there of other people who've done it so yeah that's just a quick showing of what I did tonight for fun. So, uh, yeah, take care. See you.